And before anyone says shit, David Silverman fucking admitted to inappropriately touching Rebecca Witzel. He admitted to knowing that what he did was wrong and apologising. However, it seems that apology was merely meant to be a way to try and control what the woman Silverman was grooming would do when she made clear it was an issue. So for those of you who don't know, David Silverman is a famous atheist best known for his appearance on faux news with Bill O'Reilly, which subsequently resulted in Silverman being turned into a meme. Formerly the president of American Atheist, Silverman was terminated in April of 2018 after numerous accusations of sexual misconduct along with claims of financial misconduct emerged. Since then, Silverman had a position created for him on the Atheist Alliance International Board, namely Executive Director in October of 2019. Full disclosure, until that point, both myself and Adito were part of the AAI team. We resigned the moment Silverman's position was announced to the public because we, as part of the administrative group, had not been informed that this was even in the books at the time. We did this because even though Atheist Alliance International offered us regular access to an audience of more than 100,000 atheist viewers, we did not want to be part of history repeating itself. I went so far as to publicly apologise to everyone I had ever led to the organisation, since clearly it could not be trusted with its member safety, as I had once believed. And as it turns out, I was right. Less than a month after being given the position and saying goodbye to the apparent regressive left for being held accountable for his sexual harassment, Silverman went ahead and did it again. Only this time, he left a paper trail, confirming that yes, Silverman did touch someone inappropriately, and he knows it. The name of the woman Silverman caressed down her back as she put on her shoes at a party is Rebecca Witsum. Now, if that name sounds familiar but you can't quite place it, she is a woman who responded with, I'm actually an atheist when asked on live TV whether she was thankful to God for surviving a tornado in Oklahoma. She is also a secular activist. She had posted about the incident that had occurred on November the 2nd of 2019 on the 3rd of December the same year. She stated that she felt like she ought to do so after talking to a therapist who described what Silverman had done both in and following the incident as predatory and grooming behaviours. Now I only became aware of the issue after seeing an article by David McAfee on December the 8th, a day after I published a video discussing the secular community's predator problem, even referencing David Silverman as an example of how the secular community still isn't safe, something that had me accused by various people of making an issue where there is none. Alongside Silverman, I mentioned Lawrence Krauss, a publicised child rape apologist and accused sexual harasser, and Richard Carrier, another man with sexual harassment claims against him who has tried to use slap suits to silence anyone reporting on the matter. Cases I mentioned to point out how dealing with one overt case doesn't make the secular community safe all of a sudden. Now, Rebecca began to see a lot of abuse from Silverman's fan base. people accusing her of having fabricated the event as a means to extort fame or money. However, Rebecca has something to show that this wasn't the case. Namely, she had weeks of private messages in which Silverman not only admits to having touched her inappropriately, but takes it upon himself to groom and manipulate her. Now, I've linked to her original post as well as a Google Drive created by me. The reason I've done this is because said conversation is spread out across 28 images. Therefore, when I reference something specific from said conversation, along with my usual reference, I will Note the page in an R followed by the number format. This matches the names of the images in the drive folder, making for easier reading. Now I've read through the conversation and as someone who has experience with both abuse and grooming, I have to say, Silverman is a fucking master. He's very good at manipulating the conversation, using those early days where Rebecca is still processing what happened to do a number of things. He starts out by positioning himself as a victim and equal to Rebecca. He refuses to accept that there's a difference between the anxiety of being caught sexually harassing someone and the anxiety which results as a part of being victim of said sexual harassment. And this seemed to work. Rebecca showed a great deal of empathy for Silverman and his anxiety. Then around page 9 we start to see something rather alarming. Silverman begins to drip-feed Rebecca this narrative that being open about what happened is an act of betrayal, that it's evil. 
He bemoans about how he has been, quote, burned and betrayed by employees and friends, end quote. How this, quote, whole issue makes me feel like not socialising, end quote. He talks about how he's, quote, very grateful that you are not evil, end quote, and that, quote, betrayal haunts my life, end quote. He goes on to lament about how, quote, anyone can lie. Beth and Rose both lied. I can do everything right and still fail and be taken down, end quote. He even goes so far as to thank her for, quote, not being an evil bitch, end quote. However, a week later, Rebecca comes forward about the fact that she's reread the conversation and has caught on to what he's been doing to her. I actually have that message typed up and I'm going to go ahead and read it as I feel it does a great job of expressing Rebecca's emotional turmoil and disappointment over what David Silverman did to her on the 2nd of November. The message reads as quote, Okay, I've given myself enough time to process what you said here. I spent the last 10 days losing sleep, not eating well, not exercising proper hygiene, and completely triggered. You are a public figure who has told me that you want to hide who you are. People don't wake up one day and find themselves afraid of the truth. This is a pattern of behaviour and a part of your identity. If you think it is okay to sweep something mundane under the rug, it's impossible to know how deeply your issues with the truth run. Additionally, you attempted, several times, to manipulate the conversation in ways that are not okay. For example, thanking me for not being evil. 1. Evil does not exist. 2. You are essentially making it so that whoever does the thing you don't want them to do, which is tell the truth about something you did in real life, then they are evil. So the choices you have decided to try to give are, help me hide the truth, or you are evil. If you look at the list of human needs I sent you, you can see acceptance of facts under peace in the category of safety. You can see alignment with reality as an entire category under identity. Your weird attempts to manipulate me with your weird repeated thanks for not being evil are not okay, to the point that I believe I have to point it out to you before I move on and let you just go off into the world thinking that is okay. If I were to go and say, David Silverman did whatever you did, that is not evil. It's the truth. You made your own name public, and once you do that, you don't own your name. Anyone you do anything to, owns it too as part of their own story. I'm not interested in going and saying you did whatever, because that's not how I'm interested in spending my time. But if I did want to spend my time that way, there's nothing evil about it. It's a perfectly reasonable thing for a person to do. You know, tell the truth. As I said before, it has taken me 10 days without peace because I needed to accept these facts. I'm going to go ahead and unfriend you on Facebook, but only because you are a public figure who is out there hiding who you are. If you were some random friend who I knew was hiding who they are, that would be one thing. But being friends with a public person is an endorsement at this point, and that definitely is an endorsement I cannot give. I'm sure there are public people who are my friends who are hiding things, but I'm not aware of it. If I was, I would do the same. I'm not going to endorse a house of cards. Hopefully, I can sleep at night. Due to your previous attempts at manipulation, not interested in a response. I'm going to actually start with blocking, so that the lack of desire for communication at this time is clear. I tend to unblock once I feel comfortable again. I need peace. End quote. Now at the time it seemed that Rebecca had no intention of exposing what Silverman did, but then she changed her mind after receiving help from a therapist. Something which I feel is important to discuss since it shows us that a victim of sexual harassment and other forms of predatory and grooming behaviour, they don't always know how to react at first. These things take time to process, time to figure out not only what we want to do, but what's in our best interest. As she thought more about it, her understanding progressed and that became clearer for Rebecca. Now, I talk about this because I know some people out there are going to try and argue that what Rebecca did was wrong, that she 
led Silverman to believe that the issue had been put to rest, only to go ahead and change her mind. But people need to realise just how much of an impact this can have psychologically. People are allowed time to think and heal before they act. Rebecca has shown tremendous courage in sharing the entire conversation she had with Silverman. She likely knew that some people would take a problem in her gradually shifting position surrounding Silverman's actions. But she went ahead and shared them anyway, opening herself up to be dragged through the mud by Silverman's defenders. Reminder, it took me a year to come out about the man who'd groomed me when I was a minor. Now I think Silverman's manipulation really came to light when Nathan, Rebecca's partner, contacted Silverman about picking up computers he'd apparently loaned to Silverman. Said conversation had been posted by Rebecca over mounting pressure following the release of her entire conversation with Silverman. After repeatedly admitting to having touched her, something which reminder he had acknowledged as being inappropriate with Rebecca, he went ahead and made statements such as quote, Let's judge without talking. Block and then nuke, just like Rose and Beth. I hope she enjoys her fake victim. Or poor babies, poor victim Rebecca. Evil Dave touched me. End quote. End quote. She doesn't get to take innocent shit and turn it into creepy, just so she can cash in pity at my expense like she is doing now. Shitty fucking asshole. Liar. I had screenshots too. Shitty fucking asshole liar. That's your fucking wife. End quote. One thing Silverman keeps harping on about is this idea that he has some imagined right to have his mistakes, and by mistakes one about sexual harassment, kept private. Claiming that her opening up about what happened and attempting to hold Silverman responsible for his actions is actually violence against him. He even goes so far as to threaten Nathan, telling him that if he ever splits up with her that she will go on to make similar claims about him, going on about how all he wanted was some friends and how he can't believe all this is happening again. Which by the way, Silverman, if this is all happening repeatedly, have you considered the fact that maybe the issue isn't with the people around you, but your sexual harassment? Now, to Nathan's credit, they kept very cool-headed in trying to get their computers back, simply explaining to Silverman how Rebecca didn't write Silverman's messages for him and how he needs to own responsibility for his actions. It all comes to a close as Silverman once more alludes to the other women who have made claims of sexual harassment, seemingly not reflecting on the implication that if those cases are the same as this one and this one has solid evidence which has been made publicly available, well, it doesn't paint a pretty picture for Silverman, I'll say that. Now on top of posting the messages publicly, Rebecca has opened up in talking about what Silverman did and how it has impacted her in a series of audio logs, so if you want to find out more from her own perspective, there's that to check out. And this brings me back around to what I discussed in my last video. The way in which Lance Gregorchuk being fired didn't suddenly make the secular community a safe place. For those who don't know, Lance Gregorchuk was an organiser for the Anti-Theism International Convention 2020. He was fired after trying to argue that sexual harassment was fine, that everyone does it, and joking about sexually assaulting his host on a live podcast. And whilst it is good to see some sort of consequences result from said actions, it's not enough. Said convention is hosting known child rape apologist Lawrence Krauss as a key speaker, and is in part organised by John Richards, the publication's director of Atheist Alliance International, the very same organisation that created a position tailor-made for David Silverman less than a month before he sexually harassed Rebecca. Because here's the fucking thing. Silverman, just like Lance Gregorchuk, felt immune in his actions. He'd already been accused of sexual harassment by multiple women. Credible claims had been made, yet he felt secure enough in his newfound position as part of this anti-feminist piece of shit to go ahead and do it all over again. What's really scary is that he 
nearly got away with it with his manipulation. Thankfully, Rebecca caught on. There's also the fact that the organizers of events who know Silverman is coming, what are they doing to stop this? Silverman should have never been in a situation where he felt comfortable doing this. He should have been under observation by someone who knows how to spot the signs of grooming and predatory behavior. Because even if you genuinely believed he was innocent, why would you take that chance, especially this early? We're not talking a decade later and no new evidence has emerged, we're on about ongoing accusations. If AAI wants to keep him around, they should have assigned him a chaperone. And if they think that costs too much, well, they can't afford to make money off his name and should have never created a position for him. Reminder, John Rich's entire fucking argument about why Lawrence Krauss, a accused sexual harasser and known child rape apologist attending their conference wasn't a problem, was because, well, he's been accused publicly of these things before, therefore he definitely won't do it again. Well, how did that work for Silverman? It didn't. This also speaks as to why victims have to do this, have to speak publicly, because they can't trust anyone else stepping in to stop things like this happening. They have to warn each other in any fashion available to them, even if it opens them up to heavy scrutiny as Parson attempts to discredit their character. Not to mention every arsehole thinking their opinion is owed your time. Hell, I remember one of the AAI admins approaching me the day after resigning. They asked me to co-author a book which, as I remembered it, was an attempt to portray false accusations of rape and sexual harassment as a large social problem. And I remember the post specifically mentioning David Silverman as an example whether or not he was to be the focus of the book. Hence my response. And they couldn't accept my choice in not being part of their propaganda piece. I remember how after I blocked them for spouting asinine platitudes in relation to sexual harassment, they just couldn't take it and began pressuring Udita to try and get me to sit down and debate them on the subject, not accepting the fact that I had no intention of wasting any further time with their nonsense. Either way, I hope this latest incident will be the one to bury Silverman, though I don't hold all that much hope for it. He's surrounded by fans who refuse to acknowledge the evidence available and are working very hard to undermine Rebecca's person, as if that would somehow magically vindicate Silverman. Spoiler, it wouldn't. I also hope this shows how the words put out there by Atheist Alliance International's publications director John Richards need to be challenged. That it shows how the conversations about sexual harassment in the secular community are not simply distractions, like he claims. These are important conversations that need to be had. People have been trying to have it for the past 10 years and very often they're either met with total indifference or outright hostility. And that is a fact I feel shame about as a member of this community. I think we can do better. So let's get on with it. Thank you. In wrapping up, as always, please check out your other videos. You can also support Essence Support via Patreon, and in doing so, help us become ad-free. We'd just like to say a big thank you to everyone who's already given to the channel, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, McGay, Wellington Marcus, Atlas5, and Sash Daniels. And for myself and Adita, take care now.